Hi everyone, and welcome back to Stuart Day Guitars. Today I'm talking about books. I have a number of book recommendations for you all, um, which would be useful, uh, particularly if you're young or, or sort of getting into Luthery and you're wondering where to start. Uh, I've been doing some spring cleaning and I was going through my little library and it occurred to me that this would be a good opportunity to do this. Uh, I think every craftsperson, every artisan, really should have a little library of reference books. You're always gonna find yourself in situations whether you're repairing, restoring, or building your own instruments, where you just uh, you just don't know what the best approach is. Maybe someone has done it already, or maybe someone's created a tool or something, and you can find that kind of information in books. I think it's really important to have a network of peers that you can call on the phone, and I think it's really important to have uh, books, because that's like having that network of peers in your shop. So to start is a book that I recommend the most for somebody who's really trying to get in and, and build their first acoustic guitar. And uh, this is a book that I find myself recommending quite a lot. It's um, Build Your Own Acoustic Guitar by Jonathan Kincaid. This is just a great, well done, well presented, step-by-step -step process on building an acoustic guitar. It's a very visual book, which I think is really key for a trade like Luthery. Kind of walks you through um, step by step. It gives you a little bit of a primer on tools and adhesives. If you're trying to build a guitar for your first time, either as a hobbyist or you're thinking about getting your feet wet and seeing if this is a career that you want to pursue, this is uh, a really good starting place. Um, this is also a great book in lieu of a school. Um, I'm a big proponent of Luthery schools, uh, particularly if you want to make a career in Luthery, but it's not realistic for everybody. Some people can't afford the schools, some people have another job or they have a family and they can't take the the time out to go to a school. So this is a great starting point. There's another book like this that I don't have uh, called Guitar Making Traditions and Technologies by William um, Cupiano and um, that's also a very good place to start. I could not do what I do without this next book. This is uh, Guitar Electronics for Musicians by Donald Brosnack. Uh, guitar electronics is, is admittedly not my strongest suit, and I would be very lost without this book. This is a great uh, explanation on wiring, uh, schematics, what is a capacitor, how does a potentiometer work, how do you do good uh, solder joints, etc. And then the other, the other half of the book is schematics for all your major uh, instruments, uh, Gibson Les Pauls, Fender Stratocasters, Jaguars, Gretsch, uh, you name it, there's a, probably a schematic in here. It's, it's a little bit like reading Latin, unless you are already pretty knowledgeable about electronics but it's just a really good primer, uh, very informative, and like I said, I'd be lost without this one. Complete Guitar Repair by Hideo Kamimoto. So there's a, a generation of luthiers referred to as sort of the golden era of luthery, kind of legendary instrument makers. This is the book that a lot of them cut their teeth on in terms of repair. This is sort of the most guitar repair 101 fundamentals uh, some of the information in here is a bit dated, but in any case, this is one of the very first books that was truly dedicated to guitar repair, and there's so much information in here. This is kind of one of those seminal books that I think every guitar shop needs to have. Now this book here is not really related specifically to Luthery. It's uh, Mastering Woodwork Machinery, or Woodworking Machines, and this really goes into depth as far as how, well, you can tell I haven't opened it in a while. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it tells you how to set up a table saw, how to set up a, a band saw, how to maintain and repair, and, and just make sure all of your woodworking machines are in proper order, that they're cutting accurate, and, and just gives you that knowledge as far as 
how do you replace a bearing or or how do you true up a, a saw? So that's that's a must have. Now this this one's a little obscure. Bear with me. The very efficient carpenter. This is not about instrument making. This is about home building. This book will give you everything you need to know to build a house on your own. Uh, it's very basic, fundamental carpentry 101 knowledge in here. And the reason I think this is important is because as a luthier, you're going to be building shops. You need to build workbenches, you need to frame in uh, spray booths, you might need to install a bathroom into an industrial space. And so knowing the basics of carpentry and home building is, is actually a really valuable skill set just in general, just in life gives you some self-sufficiency and self-sufficiency allows you to build in resiliency into your creative career. But, but beyond that, it really just allows you to understand how do you build a good workbench? How do you, how do you put two by fours together? How do you uh, do sort of the basic fundamental woodworking that's required to build the infrastructure around your luthery business? Now, this is a great series of books. Uh, this is called the Workshop Practice Series, and there are 49 volumes. I have about 12 of these, and they're more geared towards uh, metalworking and machining, not so much woodworking. But there's a couple volumes that are, go over like hardening steel, heat tempering, uh, sharpening edged tools, drill bits, router bits, uh, machining, milling, and it's just a really good uh, resource material to have in any kind of shop and and I would I would throw this book in there too the home machinist handbook you know a lot of luthiers they don't really get into machining too much Frank Ford and Ken Parker kind of put it in my head years ago that machining is actually a really valuable skill set for a luthier to have kind of on the back end behind the scenes a lot of what you machine doesn't actually end up on the guitar necessarily but it helps you build tools. When you are a professional luthier, it's a very specialized thing, and repair and restoration and building your own designed instruments, you're going to find yourself kind of hitting the, the limits of available tooling, and you're gonna to need to create your own tools. Now, building tools out of wood is fine, but it's not always the most accurate, sturdy, long-lasting way to build a tool. And in some cases, it's not even the most efficient way to build a tool. So learning the basics of machining and just knowing how to work with metal is, uh, I, I think, a really valuable set of skills for luthiers. And these are some good reference books for that. Next is the uh, two-part series, Trade Secrets from Stumac. It's a really great series of books. Uh, again, maybe a little dated, but there's still so much good information in here from uh, the legendary guitar makers that sort of established this trade and turned it into what it is today. It's really a book series on pro tips, and uh, I just find it to be one of those books that you gotta have in your shop. This is actually a new copy. I lost my old set, and I was on the fence as to whether or not I wanted to buy it again. And I decided to because a lot of times these books will end up going out of print and then they become very hard to find. And I didn't want that to happen. The uh, series Big Red Book of Luthery, which is a six or seven volume series, is, is uh, an example of that. It's no longer in print, very hard to find. It's actually one of the few Luthery books that I don't have myself and I wish I did it's just it's just hard to find it nowadays and uh, you know every once in a while I see a volume pop up on eBay but it's like three hundred dollars and and I can't justify that so uh, the big red book of Luthery's one if you can find it and it's affordable definitely get that uh, but that's why I, I went ahead and got these again the uh, journal of guitar acoustics this one I'm almost sure is going to be difficult to find, uh, but if you can find it, it is worth picking up. This is a little bit of a heavy, advanced book for luthiers who have a lot of experience. 
and are looking to better understand the physics of instruments. What I really like about this book is that it gets you thinking empirically about instruments. It's pretty dense, you know, it's, it's physics. It's a really incredible work and, uh, you know, I, I will admit a lot of this stuff is still over my head. But again, I think it's valuable to, to just start you thinking about instruments differently. The next series is The Responsive Guitar and Making the Responsive Guitar by Irvin Samaji. And The Responsive Guitar is essentially uh, just about what the guitar is. It talks about the history of the guitar, it talks about finishes, it talks about different styles of instruments and bracing patterns, it talks about different theories of bracing and top construction, different tone woods, and this is just a real incredible uh, dissertation on the flat top steel string guitar. Now, if you don't know who Irvin Samaji is, uh, he's a legendary guitar maker. Many people feel that he is uh, one of the top guitar makers on the planet, perhaps one of the top guitar makers to ever live. And he's a very good writer and a, kind of an intellectual guy. And so the book reads very well. It, it reads like a, a grad school uh, book. And that's kind of what I look at it as. I feel like this is the grad school of Luthery. And uh, certainly more for an advanced reader, I would say, uh, or an advanced luthier, someone with some experience and some foundational understanding. But it's also, it would also be a very good starting point uh, for someone who's serious about luthery. The second uh, book in the series is Making the Responsive Guitar. And this is all about processes, methods, tools. And, and again, it's just so well thought out and there's so much here. And then this is a, another one that, you know, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this one to everybody, uh, The Art of Violin Making. But if you're interested in carved top instruments, art shop guitars, mandolins, I'm primarily an art shop guitar builder. So I really like this book. Guitars and violins are different in many ways, uh, but there's a lot of cross-pollination in terms of methodology and tools. Uh, and there's a lot of knowledge that we can gain from this world. And so this is a really nice book. It's also a really beautiful book. I mean, this, this could be like a coffee table book. So I, I, I like this one a lot. There's also a book that I have somewhere. I just can't, couldn't find it for this video, but it's called uh, How to Make a Living, How to Make a Living Doing Something Crazy by Kent Everett. It's a very short little pamphlet. It's, it, it was basically a lecture that he gave at uh, the Guild of American Luthery, I think. And it was turned into uh, a pamphlet. And that, if you're serious about building a career in Luthery, I would, I would absolutely recommend that. I think you can find it on Amazon. And uh, that's a kind of a must read. So these do not represent all of the Luthery books that I have or all the books that I would recommend, but these are kind of the ones that I tend to gravitate toward recommending people, particularly people who are trying to come into Luthery. Maybe they don't have a lot of knowledge. Maybe they are looking for a starting point. I think this is a great set of books. If, if you were to buy all of these books that I just mentioned, you would be uh, really set. That would be a really good starting point for you. And if you're a Luthier that, that is wondering how to maybe take it up a notch and you don't have some of these, I, I'd look into some of these, these books. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe and like, and I'll talk to you guys later.